What's cracking internet? Game of Thrones season 6 episode 4. I've got actually a Game of Thrones related meal this time. It's chicken. Sandor of the House Clegane's favorite food. Bring me one of those chickens. Okay. If any more words come pouring out your cunt mouth, I'm gonna have to eat every fucking chicken in this room. Okay then, we'll get right on to it then. I did everything I could, you know. You swore a vow. I, I pledged my life to the Night's Watch. I gave my life. For all nights to come. They killed me, Ed, my own brothers. <laughs> you want me to stay here after that? And we have some exposition. <laughs> oh! 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 Snap! We're having a Stark reunion. You know, there's a there's a law in Game of Thrones that when two or three Starks get together, it reaches critical mass to the point where the Starks actually start to die. It's called GRRM's law. Hug, hug, hug! Hug her, you idiot! Yeah! So much feel! Oh, so much feel! And the Grinch's heart grew three times. I will do as Jon Snow commands. Is that Jon Snow now? This hoes ain't loyal. He's the prince that was promised. These hoes ain't loyal. These hoes ain't loyal. These hoes ain't loyal. Stannis. Just before I executed him. Oh! 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 Now we know! Stannis the man is. Let us sail on the tide of freedom. Instead of being drowned by it, there's a parting gift. Oh, snap. Hoes. 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 Them hoes. Them hoes. Them hoes. Give freedom a chance. See if it doesn't taste every bit as good as what came before. <laughs> Sweeten the deal, huh? Tyrion sweetens the deal. <laughs> to rescue you. Ben Kenobi. Oh shit, boning. Public boning. I should have been born of Dothraki. Yeah, I should have been born. They all do. You tell me everything. Some shit's gonna happen. Who helped them escape? And how she did it. Oh! She was only here. She just got here. She's only been back for two episodes. She just that was fast. Damn, that was fast. Ramsey be carrying, man. She just got back. She came back to the show after three years just to get stabbed in the neck. And stand aside and let the people that took him from you be destroyed. Destroy them. If it doesn't go as planned, the Sparrows have many friends in this city. We'll have civil war, many will die. Thousands. Don't try to have a lot of people who 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 have a Oh, we're gonna get a Dothraki invasion finally! Oh shit! Oh shit! What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? 
<laughs> it's a man's world. Dragons. Hey, get your fee. Dragons. Dragons. Oh, Dragons. Oh. What? Fucking knowing that that shit's gonna be there. Dothraki invasion is coming, dude. We finally get it. Everyone has fucking six packs in this city. <laughs> it's just like the end of season one. She's gonna walk out. Oh, again. Yeah, Khaleesi. Come on, Khaleesi. Oh, titties. Titties. Tit is just like the end of season one. It's like the end of season one, dude. Seriously, it's, just, it's like I just saw season one all over again. Dude. Oh. It's like you show some fire to these primitives. You saw fire and some Daenerys titties and these primitives will bow down. This is like... What the fuck, dude? It's like the end of season one. This is exactly how season one ended. Like, it was like the end of season one. Oh, oh! Not everyone can ride Amelia Clark. Again! I've tapped that. I've tapped that, he's like, yeah, I've tapped that, yeah, okay, yeah, I've totally tapped that though, I'm, I'm gonna kneel now, but I've totally tapped that though, bro, 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 I've totally tapped that, I mean, we're kneeling, we're doing the kneeling, oh, shit, yeah. What's up? That was the end of season 6, episode 4. It's getting better as we move into the season. I've got to say that this episode really shone for the women characters. I liked Sansa Stark in this episode. Of course, Brienne is there, who played the crucial role of kill confirmed on Stannis, based on what I heard. And we had a really awesome Daenerys moment at the end. The Daenerys moment really reflected almost as if it was the end of season one when she first got her dragons she used that ploy at first i didn't really know what she was gonna do when she was going in now i think we might actually get that one thing that we had been speculating ever since the days of robert baratheon that is a dothraki invasion we're getting a dothraki invasion so when I started watching Game of Thrones, I thought that was going to be the big climax. But of course, now we've got three major climaxes. I think I've, I'm counting three major climaxes. I really enjoyed the women of the episode. Sansa Stark and Daenerys showing really strong personalities. Not just titties, but also personalities. And we move inexorably closer to the war between the Northern Bannermen and the Wildling Host. Northern Bannermen, about 5,000 wild. The army that defeated Stannis and, as we have heard from Brienne, has confirmed the kill that Stannis is dead. 5,000 Northerners versus about 2,000 wildlings. But they have giants, though. But they have giants, though, which is awesome. When you do have the wildling host versus the Bolton host, okay, which are Northerners, one thing is, this is Jon Snow, so he might get support from some Northern Lords. Uh, he has his wildlings and one more thing one more thing 
that showed up during the episode, probably like before the halfway mark, was that Littlefinger, that guy who I, I used to despise, but he's been an enigmatic character, very mysterious in his intent a lot for most of the time. But Littlefinger said, we should go help Sansa. And Lord Arryn, the little young Robert, Robert Arryn, is like, okay, yeah, sure, let's do that. So he might have some possible assistance. And plus maybe remnants of Stannis' army. I don't know, Davos is there. It's going to be an awesome battle. Okay? It's going to be unlike any other battle in Game of Thrones that we've ever seen before. So as paths and storylines move together, we are seeing three major flashpoints upcoming. Number one is a potential civil war inside King's Landing. Number two is the war in the north. And number three is Daenerys, the return of Daenerys Targaryen. Ramsay Bolton. That guy, they're just building him up right now. They're just building him up so that everyone hates him because of all the shit. The shit he be talking inside his letter. Uh, everyone, fuck, fuck Ramsay. Just every episode that I do this, he just gets more and more detestable. I don't know. Oh yeah, and he killed Asha, the adoptive wildling caretaker of the Starks. I knew in the back of my mind that Ramsay wasn't going to face such a petty death as that. And that, and that Asha didn't have a high enough seduction skill to pull off that kill. The Daenerys moment really kind of makes me feel back reminiscent, kind of like nostalgia to the earlier episodes of Game of Thrones where it was her confidence and her magic that really seized, seized a lot of hearts, you know. She, she, has, she has a lot of fans and supporters out there, Daenerys, as a character. And I think by doing shit like this, by doing things like this, that's why we love Daenerys, you know, and it really, it's kind of like nostalgia. It brings us back to the earlier seasons, because this isn't the first time she's done this. Yeah, anyway, I think that all in all, this episode is much better than last week's episode. It was to me, in my opinion, despite the death of a, of a long time character, a very heartwarming episode. I haven't felt this good about the Stark family, despite the whole Rickon hostage thing. Since the time when Rob Stark was tearing ass in the north, it feels like Game of Thrones is coming back onto this high fantasy sort of flavor. More of like a high fantasy sort of feel. There were a lot of feels this episode. What I mean is that p characters who was, was normally kind of like really separated from each other for a while, kind of like regrouping so this, this episode is like the regrouping episode and the female empowerment episode it's the regrouping episode because in the beginning we had the Sansa Stark and Jon Snow reunif reunification Sansa's come a long way from the the doe-eyed mopey innocent girl that she was when she left Winterfell in the first place and she even talked about it in this episode about how they missed the first day before they all left and before the whole world went to shit around them. Then you have the Yara and Theon reunification, and then you have, since last season, the reunification of our intrepid, brave hero explorers with their queen, who they pledge loyalty loyalty to at the end. It's, it's like that. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I say this episode was an 8.5 out of 10. No, no, 8. 8.28 to 8.5 out of 10. Great episode. Looking forward to the next one. Yeah.